in this video we'll learn about history taking uh what are the most common ocular systems and how do you go about taking history about in a ophthalm case the first thing that you'll ask about is demographics so the name of the patient the age of the patient whether it's a young patient old patient you will ask about the age but what whenever a patient tells about age what are the common things that you see in a particular age is you these things should be going around in your mind so cause of diminution of vision in old age would probably be a senile cataract primary open angle glaucoma diabetic retinopathy age related macular degeneration of course apart from this there are many corneal dystrophies degenerations all these can be there but these are the most common causes cause of diminution of vision in middle age again you will be thinking about uncorrected refractive errors primary open angle glaucoma which can start at around 40 years of age diabetic retinopathy corneal dystrophies and fundus dystrophies these are the ones which present in this age what the cause of diminution of vision in young, younger individuals in below 20 years of age here again you'll be thinking about uncorrected refractive errors keratoconus developmental glaucoma developmental cataract and also some kind of fundus dystrophies like retinitis pigmentosa so these can also present in below 20 years of age then gender you can either be i mean you have to ask about the history for the patient occupation so whatever is the occupation you'll ask uh, what are the uh, common conditions in farmers uh, these are the these are most common uh, questions asked by uh, um, examiners pterygium, fungal corneal ulcer or senile cataract again because of UV light exposure, fungal corneal ulcer because of injury, increased uh, risk of injury to vet with vegetative matter. So once you ask about the name, age, gender and occupation, please don't go around saying uh, name of the patient, age of the patient. So you'll have to summarize in a sentence, something like uh, I'm just giving examples, a 60 year old male patient, farmer by occupation presented with or a 20 year old female patient student student by occupation presented with so this is how you to summon you will ask a question but when you present to the examiner you will send um, tell it in a sentence now what are the chief complaints always give it in chronological order okay so what symptoms started first then what is the second then third okay or patients had a trauma uh, 20 days back then noticed uh, diminution of uh, vision or pain which followed after after that pain so this history has to be there right? and it should be in a chronological order diminution of vision whether loss of vision or loss of vision in right or left or both eyes now you have to have a distinction don't say everything patient says diminution of vision you don't go around saying loss of vision diminution of vision is blurring of vision loss of vision is complete loss of vision so that's what you'll say and you will say in which eye don't say does diminution of patient present present with diminution of vision so which eye okay or it can it can either be a fleshy growth these are the most common cases that we um, give for pg uh, for ugs that's why i have described it but of course the patient can present with uh, uh, fleshy growth in the conjunctiva in case of pterygium watering right or left eye or both eyes case of diagnosis that is or watering because of patient can complain with swelling of the eyes you know swelling in the lids all those can be there but these are the most common symptoms that they present with as well we are covering this in this particular uh, video the other uh, conditions will be covered in other videos so what is the history of presenting next after chief complaint we'll go to third thing is history of presenting illness so you will start with patient was apparently well this many years ago or this many months ago or this many days ago and noticed insidious this is the most common symptom in case of cataract that we give so far. that's why i've given this an, as an example insidious onset gradually progressive painless diminution of vision in which I, right eye or left eye okay so whenever you say insidious onset you should know the meaning of it also so patient does not remember the exact date or day or time or period when he noticed the symptom. That's when you call it insidious onset. If the patient knows to say sudden onset, then you will say that patient will tell, I was fine, I woke up in the morning and I saw, I noticed diminution of vision. Or I was doing something and suddenly, or 
patient most often I was presenting something in the meeting and suddenly I noticed a diminution of vision. So that is a that is not a insidious onset. That is sudden onset where a patient remembers the exact time and date. Gradually progressive loss of vision. Okay, it has been a slow progression over a few months. So where, what could be what could be the causes? And I'll cataract primary open angle glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, corneal dystrophies or degeneration, teresia. But patient will complain about a fleshy mouth or a mask or a, a corneal a change in the color of the cornea in case of the last two conditions. Painless, again, you have to ask whether it is painless or painful, okay? whether the diminution of vision, gradually progressive loss of vision associate is painless or painful. If it's painless, it's the same thing as uh, uh, senile cataract, primary open angle glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, dystrophy, or terigium. If it is painful, what could be the causes? Gradually progressive loss of vision with pain. Remember, patients with pain will present early and they wouldn't have a delayed presentation. But the patient says on and off pain. He has noticed a gradually progressive loss of vision, but there is on and off pain. Then you would be thinking of two, only two conditions, viral keratitis, which is causing a corneal opacity and along with on and off pain like herpetic keratitis or uh, chronic iridocyclitis. There is on and off pain in case of chronic hydrocyclitis, which is getting complicated by a complicated cataract. And that's why the vision is reducing. The patient can present with pain. Now, patient was, again, you will say, if, there, if the patient complains with sudden diminution of vision. So, patient apparently was well a few months, um, days ago, and suddenly noticed a diminution of vision. It could either be painless or painful. If it is painless, there are two things that you'll think of, vascular and neurological, okay? Vascular causes could be central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion or vitreous hemorrhage. Neurological can be retinal detachment or optic neuritis. What if it is painful sudden diminution of vision? Then you'll be probably thinking of acute iridocyclitis, acute angle closure glaucoma, uh, injury, chemical or mechanical, even corneal uh, ulcers can also present with painful diminution of vision. Now, after the after you elaborate on the vision, on the presenting symptom, then you will be asking leading question to the patient, right? And please beware of the negative history that you're going to list. Only list symptoms that you can explain. If there's a gradually progressive loss of vision, you will ask whether it's associated with watering. So the... Why are you asking for gradually progressive loss of vision associated with watering? If there is, so what are the what are the conditions that you are thinking of? If it is chronic iridocyclitis or herpetic keratitis, these patients can have on and off pain and on and off watering. Okay, chronic dacrocystitis can have watering. Of course, a canal cataract with chronic dacrocystitis is totally un, uh, two different conditions, but you want to rule out chronic dacrocystitis in a case of senile cataract because you want to operate you don't want to operate a patient on cataract if he has chronic dacrocystitis so you want to rule out watering so you might say gradually progressive loss of vision but no history of watering the next colored halos when will you ask there's a gradually progressive loss of vision and when will you ask for colored halos if you're thinking of senile immature cataract, patients can present with uh, colored halos. Colored halos can also be because of senile immature cataract, acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis, acute angle closure glaucoma. Remember, these two conditions will not cause a gradually progressive loss of vision. So you're only asking colored halos if to identify if your, out of your differential diagnosis, it is senile immature cataract. The next thing that you'll ask is glare, okay? Differentiate between glare and photophobia. Diminution of vision, gradually progressive loss of vision associated with glare. Glare is something that uh, where there's intolerance to normal light, okay? In case of for post subcapsular cataracts, central corneal opacities, okay? Photophobia is something, intolerance to bright light. So patient associated with gradually progressive loss of vision associated with photophobia, you're thinking again of iridocyclitis or uh, keratitis. Okay. 
redness or pain what conditions of gradually progressive loss of vision can be associated with redness or pain no acute condition will have gradually progressive loss of vision so you'll have to be again thinking of chronic idiopathic herpetic keratitis or you redness in case of you want to lose any conjunctivitis or chronic dacros cystitis who can present with a redness on in the median median aspect of the eye okay you want to rule out that you will have you will have to tell but don't do not give irrelevant history such as when you say gradual loss of progressive uh, gradual progressive loss of vision don't say give negative history of no history of floaters and flashes of light or discharge because these are not associated with any symptom that you thought of in case of gradually progressive loss of vision floaters or flashes of light are seen in case of retinal detachment so they will present with sudden loss of vision so you don't have to ask these history so you will ask of if the patient presents with gradually progressive loss of vision you will ask for first of associated uh, pain or photophobia glare or redness or pain or watering okay then you can substantiate all those things but don't try to say floaters and flashes of light okay the next thing is past history whether there is any history of trauma why trauma can cause cataract okay can trauma can also cause glaucoma so you want to rule out that diabetes mellitus diabetes mel in case of a gradually progressive loss of vision diabetes mellitus patient can cause it can cause diabetic retinopathy which can also present as gradually progressive loss of vision hypertension what will hypertension cause hypertension can it cause gradually progressive loss of vision please do not say hypertension causes gradually progressive hypertensive retinopathy which causes which presents as hyper, gradually progressive loss of vision no hypertension you want to ask because if you are planning for any surgery cataract surgery hypertension can be a risk factor for complications like increased bleeding or expulsive choroidal hemorrhage so you want to rule out or you want to treat, control it before you plan for surgery that's why you want to rule out hypertension okay do not say hypertensive retinopathy causes gradually progressive loss of vision because this is a very common thing that the patient uh, but the students say diabetic retinopathy or hypertensive retinopathy i want to rule out that no diabetic retinopathy will not cause gradually progressive loss of vision which is the other history that will ask in past history bronchial asthma bronchial asthma chronic steroid use can cause cataract so you want to rule out bronchial asthma after past history you will ask for ophthalmic history any history of use of spectacles patient was using spectacles you want to know whether it's an corrected refractive error or a corrected refractive error which is progressing history of previous cataract surgery or previous any any surgery in that okay if it's a previous cataract surgery and a patient says yes he gives a history of one eye cataract surgery you will have to ask when was the surgery done done how was the vision after the surgery did the vision improve was it an uneventful surgery did the patient use drops for more than a month you no know, sometimes there might have been a complication in that one eye and you would anticipate the same complication in this eye so you would want to rule out so you will the history is very important is to have any use of any drops for many years like in glaucoma or you know or dry eye you might have a patient might give you history of uh, use of drops is to have any other ocular surgery like the cataractectomy for glaucoma or retinal surgeries you have to ask this history and note them down injections into the eye. patient says i am giving getting injections into the eye in case of armd or uh, diabetic retinopathy okay or pressure lowering surgeries like in trabeculectomy the next thing you'll ask is family history is to a fam uh, family history of diabetes so you will know that even this patient can also have diabetes hypertension bronchial asthma or glaucoma is to of uh, is to of glaucoma in the uh, parents or siblings where they've been using the drops every day then you would have to be more cautious in this patient and because uh, any person with family history of glaucoma has a 40% risk of having glaucoma himself okay so personal history you'll ask about the diet the sleep bowel movements or any addictions to tobacco tobacco or alcohol so in, in summary any patient presenting to you with uh, uh, in in a uh, ophthalmic uh, case uh, you will ask about the chief complaints the demographics you will summarize it in a sentence chief complaints history of presenting illness past history ophthalmic history family history and personal history thank you very much